Hello friends, time to get your sparkle on with me, Deanna, at Arts and Crafts. This week is Safari Week. I love Safari Week. Why? Because I love animals. Well today, for our Safari Art Project, we are going to make a handprint safari animal. And what I've done, as you can see, is I've made a few of them because for us, we only have time to do one, but hopefully by looking at these pictures, it will inspire you to carry on and continue on and make more handprint animals when you're done with this activity. Okay, so let's talk about the supplies that we need to do this project. It's really simple. You need a piece of paper. For my paper, I chose white, but if you can see for the zebra, I chose orange. So if you wanna choose a different color piece of paper, go for it. It's the artist's choice and you're the artist. We need a paper plate. Who can tell what this paper plate is going to be for? What do artists use to put paint on it? Can anybody guess? You got it. It's a palette. This is going to be our painting palette. So just set that right down. Next, you're going to need a cup of water with some paint brushes in it. Now I chose three paint brushes only because I never know what size I'm going to use, but I got a large paint brush and that's gonna be the fun one, and I'll share that little secret with you in a few minutes. And I got two smaller ones, because when we do our animals, we're gonna to have to put their faces on and their tails on, and so that will be helpful for us. So I suggest that you have at least one large and one small paintbrush in a cup of water. Next, you're going to need paint. Now, your paint is going to depend on what animal you're doing. So if you notice the elephant, is like a silvery gray. So when I painted the elephant, I used the silvery gray and a little bit of white and a little bit of black. For the giraffe, I used some yellow and some dark brown. For the lion, I used a little yellow, a little orange, a little dark brown. The, the lion got three colors. And for the zebra, I used black and white. And you guessed it. The reason I didn't use a white piece of paper for the zebra is because when I painted my hand and I used my handprint, the white on the white paper would never have shown up. But again, you can use whatever paper you want. Today, I've decided that I am going to paint the lion. Rawr! I think it's probably because it's the most fun sound that comes out of a safari animal unless you have a better sound. And if you do, I'd love to hear it. So feel free to send that in during, during your camp experience. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is going to be the most fun part. And now I'm going to take my palette and I'm going to take my paint colors that I'm going to use. So as I said, we're going to be painting the lion today. So I'm going to take some yellow and I'm going to squeeze it onto my palette and then I'm going to close it nice and tight so it doesn't drip and I might, might even take a tiny touch of orange just to make my yellow a little darker. You certainly don't have to do that, but I'm going to, I'm going to do that. Okay. Next, I'm going to take my paintbrush. And if you notice, when I pull the paintbrush out of the water, it's very, very drippy. And if you put a very, very drippy paintbrush into your paint, it's going to not work as great. So you kind of want to shush off a little bit of that water. You could do that at the edge of your cup. If you have a paper towel, you could do that on a paper towel right next to you. You could just blot it just like this. So it's not too wet and it's not too dry. The next thing you're going to do, and I'm gonna mix this up a little bit so I get a little bit darker of a yellow, but you might just be using one color, but I am going to do this to get it one solid color. Okay, so now 
my giant brush and the color that's going to be the body of my lion. And now I'm going to do the fun part. Is everybody ready to do it with me? Do you all have your paint on your paintbrush? Great. Now take your hand, wiggle those fingers, and paint your hand. Oh, how does that feel? It feels very tickly and very cold to me. How does that feel to you? It also feels really, really nice. I like it. And you want to really paint your entire hand. Once your whole hand is painted and you have enough paint on there, just like this, you decide how much you want to spread your fingers apart and you decide where you want to put your animal on your paper and you very slowly find your spot and by the way, before you press your hand in, make sure that's the spot you want to go in because you can only press it down once. And you're going to press it down gently and then you're going to take your other hand, your clean hand, and just ever so gently press those fingers down so that you have a full hand and then gently pick it up and you have a full hand on your page just like that. Okay, I'm gonna take a really, really quick break and so should you because we need to go wash our hands. See you in a minute. So quit lying around. Let's get started. Okay, I've added a little bit of brown to my palette so when we get to the mane and the tail, we can add it in very easily. Now I'm going to take a smaller brush because you don't want that giant brush because it's going to get too, too big and it's not going to work for the lion. So take the same color that you did for the body of your lion and take a look at your handprints. Your fingers should be facing down because those are the lion's legs. And where your thumb is, what do you think that is on the lion? You got it, it's his tail. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fill in the tail a little bit, right? We're just gonna stick it out right there. And then his head is going to go on the other side. The head is really easy. We're just gonna make a really, really, really big circle, kind of like the sun, to make our lion's head. Perfect. Great. Now we're going to take our paintbrush and we're going to swish it around in the water because we're now going to use the color brown on our painting and we don't want to mix the colors. So get it really cleaned off really, really, really well. And sometimes you have to have a little bit more patience with this. Then when you're done, make sure you get the extra water off of your paintbrush by scooching it on the side and tapping it on your paper towel or on something that you have on the table. Okay, so let's take a little bit of that brown. We're gonna let the face dry a little bit because that paint is the most wet of everything on your painting. So you're gonna take your brown and at the end of the tail, because the end of the tail tends to get a little fluffy, right? So we're gonna make the end of the tail fluffy. We're going to add the end of our lion's tail. And you can make it as big or as small as you want. You know why? Because this is your lion and your safari. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to make the bottom of his feet. Just like this. And you can use your brown for that as well. And if you want, you can even add a little bit of brown color into your lion's legs. Doesn't have to be a lot, just for the color, but that's up to you because this is artist choice. Next, we are 
going to do our lion's mane. The mane is the most fun part of the lion. So for me, I'm gonna do the colors brown, gold, which is the color that I use for his body, and I'm even going to add a little bit of orange into my mane. And so now, I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm going to start making the sticks coming out of the lion's head. And I'm gonna show you this just in one second because you can't do this wrong. I always say there's no mistakes in art, but you really can't do this wrong. Kinda looks like a fluffy flower right now, but that's because we didn't add his face to it. And you can make your main thick and fluffy, or you could do it in sticks like I did in the last one. Here we go. So I have completed my lion's mane. I made my lion's mane super duper duper fluffy. Okay, kids. Very last step, the face. So a lion's face has two eyes, a nose, a mouth, just like us, but what else does a lion's face have that we don't have? That's right, whiskers. So we're also going to draw some whiskers. The eyes, the nose, the mouth, they don't really have to be um, that hard to do. So you can take your smaller paintbrush. I'm gonna even teach you a trick. You can take the end of your paintbrush like that, where it's not the brush part, and you can stick it in to your brown, and you can make one dot and one dot and have perfect circles for eyes. That's an artist trick right there. And then, now if you notice here, I made another dot kind of for the nose, so you can do that same trick for the nose, just like that. And then if you notice, the mouth, the mouth doesn't really go across, although you can put your mouth straight across, but there's also this funny looking swoopy hook thing that goes from his nose into his smile. But since you see this one, I'm gonna do the regular lion smile, just so you have an idea of what both looks like. Okay. There we go. There's my smiley lion. Okay, kids, what's that? Oh, you're right, the whiskers. I totally forgot the whiskers. Okay. Let's make our whiskers. I'm gonna use the brown again, but be really, really careful because you don't want it to be too thick because whiskers go whoosh, whoosh, and they come right out. So let's very carefully, and I would say no more than two or three whiskers on your lion. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, one, two, three. There we go, friends. There is your handprint lion. You guys did an amazing job. And really, if you like this project, you should do all of the animals that you possibly can and hang them all over your wall walls so you have a jungle in your room. Remember kids, there's no mistake in art. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day, everyone.